is getting thin. And the red light starts to call. And you are here. And I am late. And I am late. And I'm sorry about that. But I had to do some things because I'm a teacher. And things happen. And I'm sorry. Anyway. Many of you don't know that I'm late. Mag, you know that I'm late, and I'm so sorry about that. Far, pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> it's been a long day. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. John O'Keefe here, ready to find out what in the world is going to happen to our hero, Min Lee, hanging out with a rabbit up on the top of Never Ending Mountain. Unbelievable stuff coming our way today. How are you? It's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for loving reading. Thank you for wanting more story in your life. Thank you for giving me a place to come at the end of my busy work day. What do you do at the end of your day? Now, everybody has responsibilities. Whether you are a second grade kid whether you're a third grade teacher, whether you are a mom of an eighth or ninth grade kid, whether you are a dad and a stay-at-home dad of a, of a 12th grade kid, or whether you don't have kids and uh, you have gargoyles, right? But the reality is, is that we all have responsibilities. And so one of the things that I want to talk about real briefly, I promise, because I can't wait is the idea of what does one do to sharpen their saw? Now, I'm not talking the fact that you have a saw. Your parents probably wouldn't be very cool with you having one. Unless, of course, you've shown maybe Boy Scout, Girl Scout stuff, whoop, whoop, representation, or you've been trained, right? Safety is most important. But the reality is, is how do you sharpen your saw? Sharpening your saw after you're done with a hard day's work? What do you think a logger would do? A logger would go take that saw that they've been using that whole day and sharpen it because tomorrow they're going to need it again, right? So they go, they take care of sharpening it, they hang it up, make sure it's nice and dry, have it ready for the following day. And then once you hang up that saw, what do you do with yourself? Do you disappear into TV? Do you disappear into video games? Do you disappear into skateboarding? Do you disappear and head out to the snowboarding uh, slopes? Do you uh, go water skiing? Um, do you uh, go work out? What do you do? Um, now, I did all these. Uh, or do you draw? Or do you um, do mathematical problems? Or do you figure out puzzles? Or do you journal? Do you have a series of books that you're creating? Um, all those kinds of things. Um, find out what feeds you. But here's the deal. Try not to make it something electrified. Uh, try to make it something that your hands need to do or your feet need to do or your back needs to do. That You just go out and live. Um, right now, you can obviously see the sun shining. Uh, it is a bright, sunny day here. I know that not everybody gets that uh, every day. But the reality is, is that even if it's raining, are you going out and splashing in puddles? Are you going out and laughing? Are you telling jokes? Are you learning new magic tricks like my friend Berkeley? Are you um, practicing your fly fishing like my friend Miles? Um, there's so many things that one can do to just kind of get away for a little while. You know what I'm saying? So the reality is, is that uh, one of those opportunities, especially on a rainy day or especially if your parents can't take you to your favorite park or, you know, your family's just a little too busy and you've got to figure out how to entertain yourself. Um, these are a really good way to take that time and uh, unwind and relax and refresh and think about something different than what you're used to thinking about. Now, I'm done because yesterday we talked about Minley crossing the red bridge. We talked about being met by a rabbit that looked an awful lot like the rabbit that's sitting on her bowl that she used, remember, with the needle in it, showing her where uh, maybe Never Ending Mountain might be located at the beginning of her adventure. 
And uh, all of a sudden they saw something. Do you remember? Do you remember? What did they see? Min Lee looked over and saw this guy. So funny. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about this. I swear. What was he doing? He was chopping a tree down, right? And the rabbit said something to the extent of, hmm? no, no, that's Wu Kang. And she said, why is he cutting down that tree? It seemed a shame to her that the only tree on Never Ending Mountain was being cut down. Questions, questions, the rabbit said. I should make you wait to ask the old man, but if you must know, Wu Kang tries to cut down that tree every night. How long is she, how long is Wu Kang? I don't even know if that's a boy or a girl or, I don't know. How long has Wu Kang been making the attempt to chop down that tree? I mean, how long could it possibly take? Well, do you see how it was interesting that we talked about sharpening a saw? And that meaning rest and relaxation. And then all of a sudden, Wu Kang is chopping down a tree. Honest. I did not, not, not even think about that connection until right when all of a sudden it showed up. Every night, the rabbit said. The story of Wu Kang. Four and a, or sorry, two and a half chapters today. Let's see how far we go. 628 on the clock. Most thought. Remember, this is the rabbit telling the story, not a human, a rabbit. So my friend Kate, personification, right? Most thought Wu Kang was very lucky. His wife was beautiful and his children were healthy and they all lived in a comfortable cottage on a farm in the country. His parents and elder brother lived with him and his neighbors were faithful friends. But Wu Kang always wanted more. So when his crops thrived and flourished, he decided farming was not satisfying enough for him, and the day he reaped his successful harvest, he told his friends that he was leaving the countryside to move to town. Did you hear his problem? It's not a problem that somebody else creates. It's a problem that this creates. Did you hear it? Wu Kang always wanted more. Pay attention. What you cling to, you will lose always wanted more. Even if you cling to wanting more, you're going to lose it. I'm hearing that theme over and over again in this story. Why? They asked him. Remember, it's Wu Kang's neighbors asking why. I want more, Wu Kang said. But we are so happy here all together, they said. It's not enough, Wu Kang said. So he packed up his possessions and sold his cottage farm, and land. Then, with his wife, children, parents, and brother, he moved to town. It was crowded in town and inconvenient in the smaller house, but Wu Kang was able to apprentice himself to a furniture maker. Pause. Apprentice. Apprentice himself to a furniture maker. What did he do before he came to town? Meg? He was a farmer. Does he know how to make furniture? No, but he does want more. He's got perseverance. We've got to give him that. So he moves to town to become an apprentice to a furniture maker. So what do you infer that to mean? What context clues do you have? Well, he was a farmer. Now he's in town. He's never lived in town. He doesn't know how to build furniture. So an apprentice must be somebody who learns from a master. But Wu Kang was able to apprentice himself to a furniture maker, and his family began to adapt to their cramped little home. However, 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 the day he was able to carve a chair from beechwood, can you tell, was the day he quit and decided to move to the bigger city. Why? His parents asked him. I want more, Wu Kang said. But we're happy here together, they said. It's not enough, Wu Kang said. So, with his wife and his children walking behind him, Wu Kang left his parents and his brother behind and moved to the city to search for something more. 
Their new home was a small hut of earth squeezed between other tumbled down houses on a filthy little street far away from the tight cozy house in town or the comfortable cottage out at the farm. Nonetheless, his wife and children adjusted to the tinier house in the city while Wu Kang looked for his satisfaction. But still, nothing was enough for him. After mastering the abacus, hmm, abacus, A-B-A-C-U-S, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to go search it. Pause and go search it. Did you figure it out? Yes, an abacus is an old time kind of calculator before electricity was born. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Chinese were the ones who invented the abacus and it was literally a calculator. So if he mastered the abacus, it means he became a master of mathematics. Wu Kang decided to quit the training to be a storekeeper. Oh man, I'm exhausted. After learning how to hold a paintbrush, he stopped studying for a government position. Wu Kang always wanted more. Maybe you should try to become an immortal, his young son said to him. Stop. Do you know what immortal means? I am at the beginning of a word is a prefix. Im means not, like in, as in inappropriate, right? Not appropriate. In immortal, because it starts with an M, it starts with an M as well. I M M O R T A L. Immortal means not mortal. The base word mortal means able to die. Can you guess what immortal means? Unable to die. What's his son bringing up that for? He always wants more. How in the world are you denying him? How are you going to live forever, right? So let's go back to bro little son. I'm sorry I stopped so much, but I'm telling you, if you miss these things, you don't get it. You got to slow down. You got to understand the story. And the deeper you understand the story, the better the story is. Maybe you should try to become immortal, his young son said. You couldn't want more than that. I think, Wu Kang said, perhaps. You are right, son. So Wu Kang packed up a small bag and left his wife and children to find an immortal to study under. His heartbroken wife pleaded with him as he stepped out the door. Don't leave, she said. Here, we, we are together. It's not enough, Wu Kang said. Wu Kang searched and traveled long and far, and one night he found the old man of the moon. At last, Wu Kang said, an immortal master, will you teach me? The old man of the moon preferred to decline, but Wu Kang insisted and begged and pleaded, and he would not give up. He wanted. You got it. So with misgivings, the old man agreed and brought Wu Kang to Never Ending Mountain. So the old man began to teach Wu Kang the lessons full of wonder that common men would marvel at. However, Wu Kang, true to his nature, was unmoved and aspired for more, more, more. When the old man showed him how to obtain red threads from his granddaughter, the goddess of weaving, traveling across the sea of stars on a bridge of nightbirds, Wu Kang watched and followed, but after three days, was discontent. Content means happy. Discontent is not happy. Boy, there's a lot of prefixes that mean not. Master, Wu Kang said, there must be something more you can teach me. Wow, hold on. Did you hear what it takes in order to deal with red thread? When the old man showed him how to obtain red threads from his granddaughter, the goddess of weaving, 
traveling across the sea of stars on a bridge of night birds. If you could travel with night birds across the sea of stars in order to meet a woman or a queen or the goddess of weaving to gain the red thread of immortality, he still wants more? Oh, man. There must be something more you can teach me, old man of the moon. So the old man of the moon taught Wu Kang how to tie the threads of destiny, sealing the knots with a shaft of light from the moon. Wu Kang studied and copied, but after two days, you guessed it, he again grew restless. Master, Wu Kang said, I know you can teach me more. Hence, the old man took out the sacred book of fortune and began to teach Wu Kang how to read its text. But after one day, Wu Kang exclaimed, there must be more than this. With that, the old man clapped the book shut. Yes, the old man said, there is. And without a word, the old man led Wu Kang to a barren area, a barren area, and without a word, the old man led Wu Kang to a barren area of never-ending mountain. Knocked the ground with his walking stick, and from the rock, a silver tree grew. As Wu Kang start, stared, the old man tied a string of destiny around him and to the tree. String of destiny, one to the silver tree, one to Wu Kang. Remember, when threads are tied together, you are tied together. So it's kind of like being imprisoned. Wu Kang shrugged. The only thing for me to teach you, the old man of the, said to Wu Kang as he handed him an ax, are the lessons of contentment and of patience. Hmm. Contentment, not discontent. Remember, we said that earlier. The only lesson the old man of the moon can teach this man is contentment and patience. Wu Kang shrugged and began, oh wait, sorry, I skipped something. The only thing for me to teach you, the old man said to Wu Kang as he handed him an ax, are the lessons of contentment and patience. Only when you are able to cut this tree down will I know you have learned them. It's a trick. Wu Kang shrugged and began in earnest to chop down the tree. Little did he realize that with every cut, the tree grew back and every blow only scattered the seeds from the tree into the night sky lake. So every night, Wu Kang cuts the tree. Tied by the string of destiny, he cannot leave it and is fated to chop until he learns his lesson until the end of time. How dare you want to use that as what you do with the rest of your life? <sighs> Wouldn't you agree? What was his problem? More, 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 more selfishness. So what he chose as his punishment or lesson, I guess you can say lesson or punishment, depending on how you choose to look at it, is he's going to learn contentment and patience for the rest of his life. That's a tough lesson. Oh, you remember what this means? It means there's a break, right? So we must be back. Back to Rabbit and Min Lee. Min Lee walked silently after the rabbit finished the story. And for a while, the only sounds were of the trees flying seeds falling into the river. Those seeds, Min Lee said to herself, squiggle writing, those seeds, Min Lee said to herself, they are really falling through the sky and down to earth. Those are the seeds that fall into the Moon Rain Village. It's Wu Kang's chopping that makes the strange Moon Rain. The flowering trees grow from the seeds from the tree on never ending mountain, dot, dot, dot. Do you see how our thoughts keep going? But Grace Lynn's gonna hold us. Oh my gosh, now we know where the seeds come from. Now we know where Da'afu's family gets those beautiful trees that grow in the barren region. 
right around the moon of the falling rain. <sighs> but just then, Min Lee's thoughts were interrupted by the rabbit, which had stopped suddenly. In there, said the rabbit, motioning toward a circular opening through a stone wall. In there is the old man of the moon. Oh, oh. I don't know if I want to show you this, but if Graceland's going to show me, it's not fair. Oh, M G, look at the circular thing. Look at the rabbit. Look at Min Lee. Look at the old man of the moon. What is that around him? I'm getting it closer. What is it? Red thread. What does he have in his lap? Does he have a book? Does he have a gigantic book? Boy, the Book of Fortune has to be gigantic. I don't feel like he's got it in his lap, but I think he might. Grace Lynn, look at all those red threads. This is so different than what I perceived. Hmm. Do you want me to stop now? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh my gosh. Hold on a second. I want to go back before I do that and show you what that picture was at the beginning of that chapter. Hmm, now I know. I'm telling you, go back and review what you've read and make sure you understand it. Because if you didn't pick up what that was, then you didn't get the story. You should reread it. You know what I do? I read it out loud. Doi, why do you think I'm doing that now? If I read it out loud, my eyes, my brain, my ears, my mouth, my imagination, all of it is reading the story. There's no way I can get distracted. Now, you did notice that there's a lot of thinking that happens in my brain. So I distract myself a lot, but I'm all of my thinking has to do with... Did you see how my brain did that? As soon as I stopped, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to talk about. Even right now, my brain is running away from this book. But while I was reading it, all my questions had to do with the story itself. Everything was connecting to the story, and I'm deep into it because I know so much. And so... Readers, as you read, if you started learning that there are these beautiful pictures at the beginnings of chapters, or if there's a title, or if there's a little clue of some sort, pay attention to that and say, do I understand it? If not, don't keep reading just to say that you finished a book. It's not impressive. You don't get it. You're not getting the story. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Chapter 43. I talked the whole time and I didn't look at the picture. Hmm, I wonder who that is. I guess we're not with Ma and Ba. See what I'm saying? Min Lee. I'm so excited. This is like, this is like entering it. You're like, quiet, Mr. O'Keefe, just read. Okay, I'll read. Min Lee took one step into the walled courtyard and then stopped. Countless red threads covered the ground like intricate lace. Interwoven in the red strings were thousands and thousands of small clay figures, each no longer than her finger. Like a spider, in the exact center sat the old man of the moon. What did the old man of the moon just get, get, just get compared to? A spider. Now, why? Because he's in the middle of these giant connections of red thread. I mean, let's look at that picture again. Isn't that kind of, kind of, kind of like a spider? Now, should I be afraid of the old man of the moon because they call it a spider? No, but it gives me a picture of what that looks like, right? It, it gives me something to hold on to. Hold on to your dreams. Sorry. Hold on to pictures because that helps you remember what you're reading. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. He sat in the center like a spider. He sat cross-legged with a giant book in his lap. His head was bowed over two clay figures in his hand so that the most that Minley saw of him was the top of his head but she could see his delicate wrinkled hands skillfully tying the figures in his lap together with a red thread. A blue silk bag full of red strings lay open beside him and 
Min Lee felt a shock run through her as she saw it. She had seen that bag before. Deep blue silk, silver embroidery. It was the bag the Buffalo Boy's friend had been carrying that starry night. Squiggle writing. The Buffalo Boy's friend, she's the goddess of weaving. Minley realized she spins the red thread for the old man of the moon. I knew there was something different about her. No wonder she knew how to find the king. The old man reached inside beside him for his walking stick, a bent, twisted wood stick, and tapped it on the ground. Silently, the clay figures floated from his hand, drifted in the air, then settled to the ground at opposite ends of the courtyard, far away from each other, but they're still connected. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that I lose my place. The old man's thread still connected them, and the red line wove itself among the other strands surrounding him. As Min Lee stared, the old man looked at her. The silver hair of his beard seemed to flow like a glowing waterfall and disappear into the folds of his robe, and his dark eyes matched the blackness of the night sky. Ah, the old man said, it's you. Min Lee nodded and bowed deeply. She would have kneeled on the ground, but was afraid of disrupting all the clay figures standing on the ground at her feet. Well, come here then, the old man said impatiently, and he tapped his stick on the ground. And with a sound like a flapping of a bird's wing, the clay figures moved, clearing a path for Min Lee. I know you have questions for me, the old man said. Every 99 years, someone comes here with their questions, but I will answer only one. So choose your question carefully. One question. Min Lee almost stopped walking in shock. If she was only allowed to ask one question, she could not ask Dragon's question for him unless, unless she did not ask her own. Minley felt like a fish gasping for air. What was she going to do? The memories of the hard work in the rice fields, her father's careworn hands, the plain rice in the dinner bowls, and Ma's sighs washed upon her like the splashes of water from the lake. She had to change her fortune. She must ask how to do that. But when Minley thought about Dragon, waiting for her patiently, it was as if she had been struck. And like seeds falling from Wu Kang's tree, images of the dragon rained down upon her. Their laughter as they passed the monkeys, his awkward struggles walking through the deep, dense woods, his echoing roar as he flung the green tiger into the air, the kind hand that he put on her shoulder when she cried, and the hopeful look in his eyes as she left. Squiggle writing, dragon is my friend. Min Lee said to herself, what should I do? Min Lee's thoughts bubbled faster and faster like boiling rice. Every step she took seemed to throb and Min Lee wasn't sure if the pounding was her heart or Wu Kang's axe out in the distance. She passed the clay statues. She thought she could see figures of the goldfish man, the buffalo boy, the king, and Da'afu silently watching her. Min Lee's feet seemed to ignore her pleas for slowness, like the kite being pulled in. She was being drawn toward the old man of the moon without delay. Before she could decide which question to ask, Min Lee found herself facing the old man of the moon. The old man of the moon looked at her expectantly, his black eyes as unreadable as the night sky. Min Lee looked down into the open book on his lap. She recognized the open page as, king, as the king's borrowed line. The smoothed out folds and the holes she had made in it when she had turned it into a kite were still there. Yet now the paper was invisibly fastened in the book with only a thin line like a scar showing that it had, ev that it had ever been removed. 
I need to reread that. Yet now the paper was invisibly fastened in the book with only a thin line, like a scar showing that it had ever been removed. Now I get it. And the words had changed on the page again. There was a single line of words running down the entire page. As she looked, Min, Re Min Lee realized for the very first time in her life that she could read the words, or really the word, for the line was only one word written over and over and over again. And that word was thankfulness. If the word is thankfulness, how thankful are you right now that you've made it to this part of the story? How unthankful are you right now that I've paused in the middle of the story to say this, right? You're wondering right now, your head's racing. What is she gonna do? She gets one question, her friend Dragon down there. All these people who have gotten her to this moment where she started with one goal. How do I change my fortune? She can read the one word. Why? Because she can read. And it said thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation. What you know about Min Lee right now, what you know about this story, what kind of person is Min Lee? Is she the kind of person who will ask for herself? Or is she the kind of person who will ask for a friend? For the line was only made of one word, written over and over and over again. And that word was thankfulness. And suddenly, like the light when the clouds move away from the moon, Min Lee knew clearly what her question was. There is a dragon waiting at the bridge, she said. Why can he not fly? She asked for him. I love that. She didn't ask her question and then look at what happens. Right after that, they go to a different place. You knew Graceland was gonna do that. You knew that I was gonna make you wait an entire weekend to find out the answer. But I'm going to read this and it is 32 and 51 seconds. And here's the deal. This is where we're stopping. <laughs> I'm sorry, this has been such an important chapter. This is the turning point. We have gotten to where we have wanted to get the entire, entire story. I promise, my brain does interrupt think, the reading, but I'm telling you, don't you get it? Isn't it so much more fun? You get it so deeply, you get it because you've been thinking, you've been following me, you've trusted me. I'm your storyteller. Well, I'm not actually, Grace Lynn is, I'm just reading it. The word is thankfulness. Min Lee has not asked, how do we improve our fortune? She gets one question and she decided to ask it for a friend. You're going to have to sit on this. Don't you dare cheat and read ahead. Don't do that. Don't do that. Read with us, darn it. Okay, here's the deal. I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful session. To those of you who are here, listening live almost every day at almost four Eastern Standard Time. You're gonna have to wait the weekend. To those of you who watch later, maybe you'll be lucky enough to follow along and be able to turn the next chapter over and maybe you just look at mom and go, hey, tell dad it's gonna take a little while for me to have my dinner because I have to figure out what happened. You have to chill out too. You've never learned how to read. So now you have to wait. <laughs> anyway, reading is power. 
and reading is love. And reading is something that you can do on your free time. What book are you reading right now? Hmm? Send me a note. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a joyous time reading your own books, finding your own adventures, maybe even writing your own books. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And until we are together again, may you be well, may you be merry, and most importantly, know that you are loved. I love you. Now get out of here.